Genevieve Ellen Springer, age 44, lived at 75 Gooseberry Road in Murphy, North Carolina. Murphy is a charming town in Cherokee County, and the westernmost county of North Carolina. It's known for its outdoor activities, antiques, art and casinos. It has a population of under 2,000 citizens. Genevieve was married to Clay Springer. The couple married on May 1st in 2010. After nine years of marriage the couple gave birth to twin boys in 2019. Four-year-old Kessler was born two minutes ahead of his brother. He loved trucks, cars, trains and wanted to be a fireman when he grew up. He loved jumping on trampolines with his brother and friends. Four-year-old Connor loved anything educational. He could already read entire books, count to 100, and could recite all the colors in Spanish. He loved hiking with his brother and dad. He absolutely loved throwing frisbees. The relationship was rocky, and after 13 years of marriage the two separated in October of 2023. In the complaint Genevieve filed for custody of their children. She claimed she had family members willing to help with the boys until the court made a decision. She also filed for child support, alimony, attorney fees, and equitable distribution of the couple's assets. In November, Clay responded to the filing, and raised some concerns. He told the court that his wife was an excessive user of alcohol, and other illegal substances. He also said she had a long history of abusing prescription medication. He said her substance abuse renders her intolerable, and made his life burdensome when he was there. He claimed his wife has alienated his children from him. He said, since the separation, she had attempted to alienate the children from him, and is refusing to foster the relationship. He continued saying, if Genevieve remains sober, and if she begins to foster the relationship between him and the children that she is a fit and proper person to share joint 50 to 50 custody. According to the court filing, in early November, through his attorney, he suggested that he have overnight visitation with his children each Wednesday night, and every other Saturday night, and expand to every other Friday through Monday. This agreement went well until the Wednesday prior to Thanksgiving. Toward the end of November, Springer's attorney withdrew from the case, claiming that Springer failed to follow the legal terms of their contract, and took legal action without consulting him first. The attorney claimed that Springer went against legal advice. Springer moved forward with representing herself in the proceedings. At the end of November, the children's father amended his filing stating that Springer had become more excessive in her use of alcohol, and other substances. He claimed that she endangered his life through cruel and barbarous treatment, both physically and emotionally, and in front of their small children. He claimed she was not fit to have physical custody of minor children. He also said that in June of 2023 while being intoxicated she nearly burnt down the marital home with their small children inside. A custody agreement was made on February 13. A hearing was set for April to determine alimony and child support. On the morning of March 2nd in 2024 Clay dropped by his estranged wife's home to pick up the twins. When he entered he found a disturbing scene. Both of his sons were in their beds, cold to the touch, and surrounded by stuffed animals. Genevieve told her ex-husband that she had drowned the children. He immediately called 911. Let's listen to the call. Cherokee County number one. Hey, I uh, I need um, an ambulance and cop cars to 75 Gooseberry. Um, my, my sons are dead. Okay, what, um, so tell me exactly what happened. I don't know. I came to pick them up and my wife, has, my ex-wife, has done something to them. She says she drowned them. The dispatcher immediately sent an ambulance and police to the home. When the Cherokee County Sheriff's Department arrived they found a horrific scene. Both boys were dead, and beyond life-saving attempts. 
At the scene Deputy Stoddard asked Genevieve if she drowned her children and she answered yes. Genevieve was transported to Union Hospital in Georgia. On the way she told medical that she drowned the children. Once at the hospital she told doctors that she killed her children two or three days ago. Police began an intensive investigation by the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office deputies and detectives, agents of the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation and assistant district attorneys from the office of Ashley Welch. A few days later police seized an additional 48 items from the home. Some notable items was an empty prescription bottle from the sink, a burnt note from inside the oven, four wet towels from the bathroom floor, a knife, security cameras, and a soaked pillow. Later they seized a notebook full of writings, handwritten notes, documents, folders with pictures inside, receipts, cell phones as well as several other items. Evidence at the scene led investigators to believe that Genevieve drowned her two sons within 48 hours of their father arriving at the scheduled pickup time. Autopsies later confirmed that the two young boys died from drowning. After being checked by the hospital Genevieve was discharged, and immediately arrested. She waived extradition, and was transported back to Cherokee County Detention Center on March 3rd. She is being held without bond due to the nature of her crimes. In the statement about the slayings, Sheriff Smith asked for prayers for the victim's family, friends and the first responders involved in the incident. Our children are our most precious resource and our hope for the future. We all must stand united for their protection and for justice, the statement added. A critical incident debriefing will be held for all first responders involved. A critical incident debriefing is a facilitator-led group process conducted soon after a traumatic event with individuals considered to be under stress from trauma exposure, it noted, adding, all individuals are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Neighbors were shocked that this happened in their community. Oh my gosh, that's awful. That's awful. Now, why someone would do that to a child? It's really scary to do that to young kids. And they feel bad for those kids and, and the family and the father. That's very heartbreaking. That's really sad. And I hope she can get some help. Genevieve Springer's trial date has not been set yet. It's extremely difficult to fathom how a mother can harm her own children. It's unthinkable. It grabs the public's attention. Children under the age of five are much more likely to be murdered by a parent than anyone else. According to Susan Hatters Friedman, a forensic psychiatrist at Case Western Reserve University, there are five known psychological reasons a parent may be driven to kill. Revenge, when one of the parents feels wronged they exact revenge on their partner by killing the children. There's no greater pain than the loss of a child. Neglect, in some cases the parent can't properly care for the child and after neglecting the children the parent decides to just kill the child, or the child dies from the actual neglect. Unwanted, in some cases the mother never planned the pregnancy and the child is a burden in the parent's eyes. Mercy, in some cases the parent feels death is best. They feel they are doing the most humane thing to do to stop their suffering, either from abuse or a health issue. Mental health issue, in some cases the parent is suffering from psychosis or a mental health issue. Hatters Friedman said, the important thing is if someone you love is having symptoms, if you're having symptoms, to get in for an evaluation and for treatment, because the whole thing is we want to get people treated so we can improve their quality of life, improve their relationships with their kids and with their family. Sandra Wheatley, a British psychologist specializing in family psychology, made the point that the choice to kill a child, whether it's an infant, toddler or older, represents a conscious decision that's extremely difficult to classify as healthy. She said, the fact is, when somebody decides to end the life of a child, whether they are just born, or whether they have been around for longer, that is still a decision they weigh up, with the pros and cons, Wheatley said. It is very hard for most of us to understand how somebody could weigh up the evidence and come up on the side of death in that scenario, 
and consider that as the best outcome to act upon. Paula Bruce is a clinical and forensic psychologist in Beverly Hills, California. She states that many of the women who commit neonaticide or filicide have borderline personality disorder, marked by impulsive behaviors, with the instability of moods and emotions. She said that people with this condition have unstable relationships. They go from one extreme to another, treating people with admiration but that same love quickly turns to intense anger toward them. All researchers agree that more studies are needed. A GoFundMe was set up to help Clay Springer with funeral costs. Connor and Kessler's funeral was held on March 10 in 2024 at Townsend Rose Funeral Home in Murphy. If you are having disturbing thoughts or feelings of harming yourself or someone else please seek help immediately. Know that you are not alone. Genevieve Springer drowned her two young boys after a long custody battle with their father. What could drive a mother to kill her own children? Did she murder them to keep them from their father? Or was it mental illness? These two precious lives were ended way too soon. Nobody has the right to take another life, especially a child. May Connor and Kessler rest in peace. That concludes this episode, keep your eye out for the next volume, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Want to help support the channel you love, and get something in return? Simply purchase some Elizabeth's Chronicles merch. We have coffee mugs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, cozy blankets, beach towels, phone covers and more. Use the coupon code EC10OFF4U and get 10% off your order. The link to order is in the description area below this video. Thanks for helping Elizabeth's Chronicles continue to make the videos you love.